Well, a very warm welcome to you. Now, Gen Z's worldview will be formed largely by the COVID-19 global pandemic. I think that's fair to say. This group, born after 1996, seems to have shown remarkable resilience in adapting to the so-called new normal that we now so often refer to. So immersive digital gaming environments are now emerging as testing grounds for new forms of socializing, particularly popular under this demographic. Let's talk now to Bronwyn Williams, partner at the Flux Trends Agency. In a recent article, you suggested that gaming platforms are morphing into social networks and even replacing some traditional real-life interactions. What would some of those be? What we're really starting to see is that people are using gaming platforms as a form of communication. So it's not just a form of entertainment where you're sort of a passive observer or someone that is playing a game by yourself, but rather these massive open online gaming platforms and environments are becoming sort of a third space for people to actually connect with each other, with friends, with family members, with strangers, and starting to really build that virtual life and that virtual social network, which we've heard about for a long time from science fiction novels from like Ready Player One, I mean, which came out in the 80s. They were sort of talking about these ideas, but what we're starting to see now is that it's really happening. And I suppose one of the more interesting forms of this new socialization that we're seeing would be what happened when the world went into lockdown. We found in South Africa, as we all know, we got parents that were separated from their children that couldn't see their children for three, four weeks at a time when we were first gone under lockdown. And what we started to find was that parents started to find ways to connect with their estranged children. And we found one of the ways to do this was actually to socialize with their children in a virtual environment, particularly using platforms like Fortnite and Minecraft, which is quite an interesting way to look at it. So gaming is not something your children do without you. It could actually be a way to build a real relationship now, I'm wondering if you've given any thought to the psychology of this phenomenon and what the impact is going to be. It's quite interesting because there's pros and there's cons to all of this. With any sort of technology, it's always double-edged. So there's always some, some good things in terms of connections. So if you are physically distant from your family or from your friends, it's better to socialize in an environment like that, which can feel a little bit more intuitive than through a 2D screen, like using a Zoom platform or a FaceTime, because you're interacting in a 3D world, even though it's a virtual world, and that can build sort of more meaningful virtual or digital relationships. But at the same time, when it comes to gaming, the World Health Organization as of 2018 has actually declared gaming addiction to be an official mental health condition, which is quite concerning. And we're definitely seeing these open, massive open online gaming platforms do tend to draw you in. And they're quite easy to get addicted to if you do have an addictive sort of personality. As people across the world have been put into lockdowns and have been forced to entertain themselves using new ways, is this sort of phenomenon of escapism into a gaming virtual parallel universe going to have a long-term effect on the psyche, particularly of younger people in their formative age? You know, this is the time that young people are supposed to be socializing. You also suggest, Bronwyn, that gaming is altering the way that we as a society think and educate younger generations about things like the economy and history and even activism. If you're spending large amounts of time there, interacting with people all across the world, and you're really forming real relationships with these people, it's very much the same way we form relationships with our tribes, with our social networks in the real world. So there has a sort of fundamental forming sort of paradigm that goes on with these gamers. And then when you interact with the space, you're getting messages. You know, we know from media, media, media is part of the message, the medium is part of the message. And there's a whole lot of subtleties that come through in the messaging that we take in from the media that we consume. I mean, we know about propaganda for over a century now. There's lots of science that goes into this. And what we're finding is a lot of these game developers are sort of building layers of social activism or politics or economic ideology that the game makers obviously support their worldview, but then starts to filter through to the game players. Bronwyn, thank you very much indeed. Now, it turns out gaming can offer more than mindless escapism. It is a real reflection of our physical reality in a virtual space. So if you're finding it hard to connect with your child, try stepping into their brave new world.